Hi guys, we're going to continue with our story. Um, if, if any of this is offensive to you, please go check out my other channel, Anna Grace. I usually link it below my videos um, where there's all kinds of biblical references to what we're talking about here. Okay, so our story, guys. In Genesis 1, God created every creature and all of that under the sun. Um, male and female, he created them. Okay, so there was already this population here that the Elohim created. In Genesis 2, in comes a different entity, the Lord God, and he forms Adam. Strangely enough, when already in Genesis 1, there was already male and female created by God in the garden and everything was very good. The Lord God, who is a different entity, then comes in and creates Adam. And Adam was made for the sole purpose of tending the garden. You guys, it's working the field. It's enslavement. It's slavery is what the Lord God formed Adam for. Um, <clears throat> so what happens is that there, the entire universe was able to come and plant seeds here. And again, it's not just um, human type seed, it's um, plants and animals. Um, before there was even a garden, um, God brought plants here, but there wasn't, he couldn't even plant them yet. He brought the seeds and, and then planted them when there was a man created to tend the garden. So all, even the seeds are coming from a different place, okay? Um, so, and I also want to tell you that in Genesis 2, it states that there are generations of stars and generations of man. So generations of stars, you can look at it however you want to look at it. You can think of aliens if you'd like. You can think of conscious light beings if you'd like. Stars are conscious. They produce elements. And so they are very much alive and living and have generations themselves. Okay, so let's continue. The There were certain gods, okay, stars, angels, hosts of heaven, whatever you want to call them, that came and planted a seed here. And he wanted this creature that he formed to serve, to be enslaved and to serve him. Okay. These gods wanted to create a formed man to serve them. Okay, guys. And what happened is he planted the serpent god okay this other god planted a bunch of seeds here on earth when there was already male and female also in the earth he comes and plants his own seed okay and he was creating this race with bad intentions to be able to serve him so what happens is that man ag agrees to take the serpent by the tail. It's the story of Moses in Exodus 4, where the rod in Moses's hand is a serpent. And somebody says, Moses, take that serpent by the tail. So Moses agreed to propagate, you guys, all the language is important here, to propagate the serpent's tail. It's his seed disperse and seminate seed guys the serpent's tail and you as the word is so powerful if you eat of the serpent's tail t-a-l-e you become like the serpent so what god did then okay some some benevolent god said well you touched adam too early you gave him this knowledge of the gods the forbidden fruit, way too early. And so Adam ate of the forbidden fruit and God, the benevolent one, said, you shall surely die. Adam died and 
if, because he ate of the serpent's tail. And um, God decided to let him live on borrowed time. Okay. So what happened is Adam became a child of the serpent because the tail was so the word of the serpent was so deeply woven into the fiber of his textile. Textile, word, text, fabric, textile. So Adam was woven with the textile of the serpent's skin. God, Adam should have become a spirit, right? Because he died. God gave him skin, the skin that Adam took was the serpent's skin. He became a child of the serpent. And the serpent skin is your mummy clothes because God said, you shall surely die. You are going into death, Adam, but we're going to mummify you. The strips of cloth that wrap around the mummy are the serpent's skin. This is all symbolism, guys, and very true also. So Adam was mummified. He was put into this wrapping and it was his death cloth. This is what he decided to live in <laughs> um, when he was dead. God said, you shall surely die. So now he's in his mummified state, okay? While he's in the mummified state, there's a lot of mutation going on. The serpent is messing with his DNA structure. And this is by the power of the word. Because whatever information Adam is eaten of is forming his form, information. It's forming Adam's form, okay? So there's a lot of mutation going on by the serpent's tale, the serpent's story, okay? So... Adam is now about to get a chance. Um, on some level, Adam agreed to go with this and said, I know that in the end, if I can figure out that the serpent who is causing me to serve him is actually the deceiver, if I can figure that out, and if I can overcome this death state, if I can slay the enemy while I'm in this death state, when I resurrect, I will be like God. <clears throat> so I have to overcome this enemy just like Christ did, okay? This is the story of Christ too. Okay, in the meantime, the serpent is receiving all of Adam's worship, Adam is bowing down and serving the God of death. He, he does, this is the trick of the serpent. He doesn't know that he's worshiping the God of death because he is in death. Okay. And as you serve this God and worship him, it, there is an energy exchange here. And what we call it today is the tithe. Adam is paying a currency currency current currency he's worshiping with his energy worshiping the serpent and causing the serpent to have so much power here on earth so adam listens is very obedient to the serpent he's very um obedient to the commands of the serpent he is in the restrainer because the law, these commands keep him bound, bound um, to not go explore other ideas because then God slaps him on the wrist and says, hey, don't touch that. Don't do this. Don't do that. And so it's very deceiving. Adam stays bound in his mummy clothes and he doesn't dare step foot outside of his shell. Okay, um, and in the meantime, he's worshiping the servant, which is paying homage to him, tithing to him, serving him, and it's pushing Adam's living energy 
into the serpent so that Adam remains in his death state, what is, what is mutated, what is coming through Adam is a channel of dark energy. And it's feeding right into the serpent. Why is it dark energy? Because it's death energy. It's not living. It's the tree of knowledge, which is the death. You shall surely die. Okay? So it's death energy that is... Adam is worshiping right into the serpent, which has caused the serpent to take over all of humanity, even the male and female created in Genesis 1. See, everybody is now under laws. It's commandments and government authority, government rules that keep you bound in chains. Don't do this, you'll go to hell. Don't do that, you'll be set sent to jail. You are imprisoned by laws. And this poison from the serpent has infiltrated all of humanity on some level, okay? Every human being in the world has taken the mark of the beast, which is living under government rules for fear of being punished if they step outside, okay? So the idea here is that Jesus is telling us, get up off your freaking knees again and um, stop serving. Stop serving your master because I was the perfect servant and you don't need to do it any longer. Okay. Okay. How the serpent now is coming to collect because he is the tax collector. He is Kronos. He is Saturn. He is Satan. And he's coming to collect his due. What, what he's having Adam do, his own seed, the serpent's seed, what he is having Adam do is go out and gain the world. The serpent has given Adam special privilege, beginner's luck to go out and gain him the world. So Adam has been given um, some amount of riches, some amount of abundance, some amount of glory, and some amount of fame, and some amount of pleasure and abundance on this earth. Because the serpent knows that in order to keep Adam worshiping him, serving him, he must keep Adam semi-happy here. So he allows Adam to go out and gain the world. Then Adam takes the world, sells his soul, the energy, sells his soul to the devil. Because the devil, Satan, the serpent, promises Adam, I'm going to let you into the gates of heaven. I'm going to let you into the gates of heaven. Keep serving me. Keep tithing to me. Okay? Adam doesn't realize that the serpent is lying. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Adam doesn't realize, uh, Satan, serpent, you're, you're not going to let me in ever, are you? No. Keep feeding me your wealth, your current, your energy. Okay, so now the serpent is calling do his seeds. He allowed Adam to go whore with Babylon, Babylon the whore, okay? Um, the whore of Babylon is the commerce. She's the trade center. She's the one world trade center, guys. She has, she's the marketplace, market. She's the marketplace and she's beautiful. She's rich. She's bedazzled and bedecked with makeup made up on her face and she's jeweled and she's perfumed and she's got all these gorgeous, gorgeous fabrics, textiles, okay, um, that she is clothing, clothed in. She's donning is what the Spirit's saying, don, she dons, she wears, thank you, Spirit, wears, wears 
W-A-R-E-S, her products, okay? So she's, she's the whore of Babylon, stick with me. And Adam has been allowed to gain the world because he's selling his soul to the devil, okay? And her marketplace, when you eat of the riches of the world, guys, you are consuming, consumerism, and you, you become what you eat. And so Adam has very much become this form of a person who is subservient to the system, a slave to the system, but he f believes that the treasures of the world are worth it. Okay, I will continue to serve this God because I'm gaining all the wealth and riches of the world. Okay, little does he know that he's always funneling it. <laughs> I didn't know that world word was going to come through, funneling. He's always funneling it to the serpent and it's never, it's never, uh, it's corruptible. It's corruptible. It is not um, everlasting. It's not everlasting. His joy is temporary. He will always have suffering in that because he's enslaved. Okay, guys? So now as the time approaches for one final call, taxes are due. The census is being called. Okay? The serpent's coming to collect his skins, guys. It's money. What Fruit was produced in his egg. In his egg. He is calling the shells dew. Shell. Why do I say shell? Because you guys, when you... When this all occurred, you were not only living on borrowed time, chronos. You were living in a borrowed skin. You were living with a borrowed breath. It's a soul. It is a temporary soul because you went into death, guys. It, it's a dead spirit. It's a soul. And, and it doesn't matter the language. Soul is the word sheol. You are in the grave. You were breathed into by anger into Adam's nostrils is what it says. You were given a temporary breath even. It's not the true breath of life. It's a temporary borrowed breath. You were supposed to die. You did. You were given a borrowed soul, guys. Soul is sheol, is shoal, is shell. It's an eggshell and in it is going on all of this DNA um, weaving together. Thank you, God. Weaving this textile together what story are you still believing in okay so the serpent wants to come early um as he's impatient <laughs> and he wants to check his eggs so the tax collector is coming to collect what is due okay he knew that God, the creator of all, the benevolent God, was the creator of all form, no matter what kind of form it is. So he is accounting for this and he is darkening Adam by letting him continue to whore with Babylon. Okay? So the... Uh, the serpent, I'm seeing it right now, thinks he's got all of his ducks in a row, okay? He thinks everything's in order. Yep, because this is the tally, this is the tail, this is the accounting, this is the reckoning. He thinks he's got it all in order. This subtle serpent thinks he has outwitted God. He thinks he's outwitted him. What the serpent is not accounting for is the devil cross. He's not accounting for the double cross. 
This is so wonderful. The XX chromosome, the female. All the serpent has been worried about is the patriarch. He, he has not accounted for Tamar and Mary and all the female, the XX, the double cross. He doesn't know the secret of God. So who Tamar is, Guys, her, her name means palm tree. <laughs> of course it does. Tamar, dressed up like a prostitute. Ensnared Judah, who is Judas, who is the betrayer. Tamar means palm tree. She dressed up like a whore. to ensnare Judah, who is Judas, the one who would um, betray Jesus, okay? And when he calls off the skin, his skin, the serpent's skin, the, the whore's clothing, the red garments of the whore, when he calls do his skins, which is his money, which is his currency, little did he know what God did underneath the costume, underneath the crust, the true God laid a mantle underneath the crust, the costume on top. God, the gods, the true benevolent gods were building another temple in the mantle of Elisha. And those gemstones and jewels, the riches of the world, you guys, remove them. And what does she have underneath her? She was playing a part. She was the allure. She was the snare. Guys, this language is all over the Bible. She drew in this Adam who needed to tithe and so went out and toiled the field relentlessly to draw in all the beauty of the whore, all the beauties, all the riches, all the abundance of the whore. But underneath, God was building his own temple. Bedecked, bedazzled, bejeweled, perfumed, and made up in the riches of heaven. As the serpent calls in his taxes, it this is all going to backfire on him. He didn't know that underneath, God was going to use the feminine allure. The feminine, spit it out, feminine fisher woman. That's how God did this. He tricked the serpent. Now, the serpent's going to come to collect his. And it's going to backfire on him. And when he opens his seeds, two-thirds of them at least are going to be, have become the mother of dragons. Meaning, they hold the riches of heaven. The word dragon comes from the word drachma, yet another coin, you guys. Denarius, mother of dragons. Denarius is a coin. Dragon from the word drachma, yet another coin. She is the mother of the currency because she's got the riches of heaven stored within her. This is going to backfire on the serpent and the children that continue to tithe to him, serve him on their knees as slaves, selling their soul to the God of the dead, the trickster who they thought was the God of the living. 
God, the true God, benevolent God, came in and grafted all of these mutated children, mutated by the tail of the serpent, mutated seeds, that he would have them under death, under his thumb. That's a reference to the garden. Under his thumb the entire time, God was grafting them into the true tree of life. Guys, the palm tree. It look, it's a twin. It looks exactly like the tree of knowledge. We have learned this. It's a palm tree. Both of them are. And they both sit at the center of the garden. God turned it into a living vine by giving them the storehouses of heaven, the, the silos filled with grain in Europe, in Europe, in Egypt are about to open up, you guys. We are going to take over the market because we have been training with the master trickster of the market, Mercury. The transmutation of Hermes Trismegistus, the alchemist who can transmute copper coin into gold. It's a transmutation rising above the mutation of the serpent. And when the serpent comes to check his seed, out comes the mother of dragons who will backfire on him. It's, I'm seeing, <laughs> this battle of fire, This mother of dragons and the fire that comes out of her mouth, it, because it's the sword of truth. I mean, this the serpent doesn't even stand a chance. So there are serpents who continue to crawl on their belly, to toil in the field, and yet it only produces thorns and thistles. There's never any true, foundational, permanent, everlasting happiness in it. There's always suffering in it because you're always tithing to this false god, false idol who is not living but dead. And so I'm seeing Bella and the dragon. He, he can't, oh my God, he can't speak. He can't speak. Your idols cannot speak. Guys, it's the mute He's a mute. He's dead. He's a mute idol. What does it mean? Not the true word. This story is death. Mute. Mutation. Mute. Guys, what I think is happening, I think the serpent knows that the taxes are collected. <clears throat> the currency is won. The riches are won by nuclear power. He knows this because um, the Morning Star, he's aware of that. He's aware that the knowledge of the gods is the knowledge of the stars and stars are all about nuclear power. It, so the serpent knows that um, nuclear power is the key. And so I believe that the serpent is going to, it's a story, guys, please come in and use nuclear power to break open his seeds. And it's going to backfire on him because the, the third, let's say, the, the dragon da drags down a third of the stars. Okay, let's say a third of his seed are going to um, implode, collapse because they are black holes. There's no substance there. They were continually feeding a false idol. And so they have gained no substance themselves, you guys. They are but shadows. They are but shadows. There is literally no uh, flesh on their bones. Okay? They are going to collapse upon themselves. They've been greedily eating up something that's temporary. It's vanity. It's able. What a twist on the story. Again, we already knew that. We've already talked about it. Abel is but a breath. 
He's but this temporary soul. He's, he's but vanity. And they think they're all serving this perfect God. Oh, I gave you the perfect tithe. No, 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 no. Stop serving. Believe in Jesus. Jesus accomplished it for you. What the hell are you serving for? Whoa. They are but vanity. A breath in the wind that is not the truth. It's a shadow. It's all been a shadow. Okay? And I believe that this is going to reveal the seeds that were black holes. Greedily eating up the wrong food that could not produce a healthy form. And so it's failure to launch. It is the seed that does not take correctly. The grafting into it, 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 the tree of life didn't take. They didn't even see. They didn't even understand that the whole world is grafted into the tree of life. It's stated in scripture and they didn't even see that. The others, the grafting that God, the benevolent God came in and did, he gave us back our help meet. It's Eve. It's Eve. He gave us back the runner. When Adam was created, the rib was taken out. It made Adam lame. It says in the language that he lost his foot. He lost a member. And so the true God came in and gave us Eve. It's the feminine. It's the mother. We have been working at this for almost three years. You guys, I am so grateful for the understanding of Mary, who's the rebellion. This is an immaculate conception for her. A rebellion against who? Well, she birthed Jesus. The rebellion against the old covenant, the serpent, Yahweh, the commandments, the laws, the servitude, the imprisonment. Mary, the rebellious one, is having immaculate conception, rebelling against Lucifer, who, who rebelled against God. It's that parable I gave you about Satan playing God, playing Satan. Guys, playing God. God is tricking the serpent. He's outwitted him. He came in under the serpent's nose and transmutated the mutation. Mercury. This is the turning over the tables of the marketplace. You will now gain the riches of heaven. It's the economy. It's the trade center picture that we have. The one world trade center. <clears throat> I believe that the serpent wants to do all of this by nuclear. And so he might send a missile, guys. And lo and behold, this is totally going to backfire. And it's, I believe it's from the Asian countries, okay? Um, yeah, the wilderness of sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so a third of them collapse upon themselves. It was all corruption. It was all vanity. Uh, Two thirds are going to rise as seraphim, fiery flying serpents, Seraphim mean healers. Guys, they gained their wings. And this is a superpower that was the benefit of taking the forbidden fruit. It's an anointing that's the benefit of taking the serpent's fruit. That old story then, the serpent's tail, is going to be wiped. So that no more mutation. No more mutation. Mute, meaning we weren't able to hear the voice of the true God because we were listening to a false idol. Okay? The entire world. No more listening to false authority, the author of our story, laws, government, all of that. That's all crashing down too. The marketplace is one major player in this because it has governed our lives. You are what you consume, consumerism. You are what you eat, okay? 
out comes the mother of dragons and she says, I don't think so, serpent. This is the sign of Jonah. It's the bird, the dove, Jonah. It's the sign of Jonah. The wicked generation will realize the failure, their failure to launch while Jonah comes up out of the belly of the sea serpent. It's the sea serpent's womb. It's the seed of the serpent, you guys. And out flies the ones who learned to gain their wings. Transmute the negative into the positive. Transmute the copper serpent into a golden, beautiful drachma. Dragon, one who sees clearly. Seraphim, the healers. Needle and thread. Weaving the textile of truth, the sword of fiery burning truth out of their mouths. Okay? Maybe that's the next step, you guys. Serpent wants to collect what's due and he's going to force it by nuclear power. Okay? The other nuclear truth Dear God, let this upload. <clears throat> As this, this is true, this is written in the stars. It's written in the stars so that we would have a, a blueprint, you guys. As the scorpion sting is aimed at the mother of all, the mother, the whore of Babylon who's actually playing a part. She's actually the virgin underneath. As the scorpion sting points at the galactic mother center mother star, so is the fiery darts of the Sagittarius centaur, the bow and arrow of the truth. As this nuclear power comes, I see it being one fission for the third that didn't develop in the womb and two thirds who did um, at the same time, guys. So we'll see how this plays out. They're both aiming their darts right now. The poison, scorpion sting, and the fiery dart of the Sagittarius who hits the pine cone, the pine cone bursts forth with either a burned black seed, for lack of a better term, or the white stone in the forehead. Shine. Halos. Halos versus cloven tongues of fire. This is truly the battle of Armageddon here, guys. And there was a time for the cloven tongues of fire, Pentecost. There was a time for it. That's beautiful, guys. It's also time for the halos, shine versus fire. Okay? Okay. I'll see you in the next one.